Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. Ruth is a visiting professor at a large university in Ireland, and Claire is an associate professor at a primarily undergraduate university in Northern California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Ruth. And I'm Claire. And today we're talking about helping students get the most out of internships. But first, Ruth, how was your week? My week was great. I am kind of... There's something that's like really typical Irish person thing, which is... So I think I've explained on here that the length of the day varies a lot throughout the year. And so everyone talks constantly about they call it the grand stretch in the evening but it's like how <laughs> but I'm like literally every morning we go out to the car and I'm like girls can you believe it back in December we were driving to school in the dark and here we are <laughs> and they're like yeah no we know you said that yesterday and then the next day I'm like and here we are in full sunshine at 7 a.m can you believe it so I'm just constantly shocked and surprised by and it's like not that long a period of time when it's really dark but somehow it's like makes such an imprint that every day you're like wow it stays bright and everybody knows what time sunset is they're like well it's up to six o'clock today oh yeah it's getting (laughs) getting long and so yeah that's I forgot about that and now I find myself here I am participating in it but um tell me how yeah it's definitely just like a national like oh here it comes like the weather I guess you can always talk about what yeah. time is the sun setting now? Yeah, there's a lot, and there's a lot of weather. A lot of weather uh-huh. here. Um, but tell me, well, cause, yeah, just like the other day, I was going to pick up the kids, and I could not see because it was lashing rain so hard. Oh my goodness! And then literally two seconds later, it was because the sunlight was so bright, like I, <laughs> and you're just like, I can't. This is so bananas. So, yeah, yeah, that's fun. But tell me, how was your week? My week was good. I'm um. Working through the process of getting contact lenses instead of glasses. Ooh. And I feel like all this mask wearing kind of pushed oh, me to be oh. like, okay, maybe I should do give it a shot. But what I finally realized was I don't have to commit to wearing contact lenses instead of glasses. All I'm doing right now is giving them a shot. Try them out. See if I like them. And if I do, then I'll switch over. But, yeah, I think it could be cool. I'm excited about, like, not getting raindrops on my glasses and... Oh, uh-huh. I yeah. One thing it's huge. Okay, I have many things to say about this, but um, <laughs> are you getting the daily disposable ones? Well, I haven't gotten them yet, but I was planning to start with the monthly ones. What were you thinking? Okay, well, yeah, that's perfect. As long as, like, because then you can just switch back and forth and it's fine. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. the big, like, riding your bike, that was a big mm-hmm. thing for me where contacts was better. Because the oh, not having windshield wipers on your glasses, obviously. <laughs> and so that was, that was a big help. But also... I literally felt like, like, you know, that whole, ha ha, how did nobody know Superman is Clark Kent? But legitimately, Uh when I would go to work without my glasses, people would be like, hello, who are you? I'd be like, it's me. Like, but I swear people were, I would say hi to people and people would be just giving me a weird look. Like they had no idea who I was. do I know you? Yeah, I'm excited to see how (laughs) you get to like go around town and nobody will know who you are. So that's hilarious. Yeah, I do feel like it'll be. An adjustment period of like, this is what Claire looks like now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, you know, any problems I've heard with contact lenses are usually student age people mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. bananas things, like wearing mm. them for six days straight and then being like, and then it hurt. And you're like, yeah, no, I know. So, yeah, at least you, uh, I feel like you're at the age where you can be responsible about cleaning. Oh, good. And yeah. Don't just. I feel like, like it'll obviously be a challenge to learn how to do it but like then I'll know how to do it oh know? it's it's 100% you'll yeah just don't sleep in them or are these okay. ones that you put in for a month and it, is that a thing no 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 you put okay. them in every day but yeah. then you you use the same pair for a month but you yeah. take them out when you're sleeping yeah that's mm-hmm. perfect I'm very excited and yeah. for rocking out when you're rocking yeah. out right don't, when you're playing important drum fills or something, you don't have to worry about your glasses flying off. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I have more to report in it, like about this swimming thing. Oh, yeah. But one thing swimming. was like, oh, I need to get something to hold my glasses on because, like, I don't want my glasses to get swept off. No, no, definitely yeah. not. Interesting. Okay, yeah, report back. I'm excited. Okay, this I should will. be yeah. one of our segments. It's like. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Claire. now I Claire's content. <laughs> yeah, Claire's spy persona. What, what have you been able to do? Anyway, yes, sorry. So tell us, do you have a quote for us this week? I do. And um, it's, again, from the book The Four Agreements, which um, I promised to stop quoting from at some <laughs> point, but it is really good. <laughs> I want you to do at least four quotes from it, though. Do you know what I mean? Because I think we only have two yet. So Yeah, I think, yeah. I think we're at least at three now. Yeah, so here we go. Um, so The Four Agreements, if you've missed me talking about it before, he's talking about four main things that you can do to really help um, just improve your life and you know it's like being impeccable with your words Mm. and not making assumptions and things like that but he also talks a lot about like as describing all these agreements he's talking a lot about the judge in your mind and the victim in your mind and how the judge is like offer making all these sentences and the victim is responding these are all parts of you at the same time and how we anyway so he says if you fall do not judge Do not give your judge the satisfaction of turning you into a victim. And I just really liked, when I read that line, it really stood out to me as how it is satisfying to decide, oh, woe is me, this is so hard. But that's not actually nice to myself. So um, it's just interesting to hear it phrased as give your judge the satisfaction of turning you into a victim. So just a reminder to, uh, to not do that. That's so interesting. Yeah. Because I, I have certainly had situations where I have fallen into the victim role. Mm-hmm. And it's so unproductive. And sometimes right. there is times where legitimately something bad happened to you. And absolutely. Sure, of course. But of course. yeah, yeah, no, that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah. I just hadn't thought of, because it doesn't feel like you're indulging in making yourself a victim when you're feeling like a victim but um there is a little bit of that sometimes the satisfaction of the judge so i I don't know just thinking about it from that perspective i feel like maybe will help me be a victim less often in my mind you know well and i think it's it's super relevant to what we're talking about today as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so today's episode was kind of inspired by a listener who was a student who had listened to some previous episodes and had a really excellent question, which was how to get the most out of their doing specifically an REU, but like kind of an internship experience. And so, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So what's what's working for you with that? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing I want to tell people is to say yes to everything within Ooh, reason. Like, <laughs> like, you know, um, <laughs> like as someone who, you know, if people, I don't know, I've had various approaches to different things but certainly at a at a, one time when I was an undergrad if people asked me to do something like do you want to go see how the AFM works and I didn't know how to do it I would say no because I was embarrassed mm. you know what I mean and I was like uncomfortable doing things that I didn't know how to do and so I think just being if anyone is like hey we're gonna go down to the beam blah 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 do you want to see it Just like yes please absolutely let's go and do that and so trying to say yes to everything that comes up on the project or if someone's Mm -hmm. like hey do you want to present about this which is the internal absolutely not I don't want to present about this but like (laughs) just to say yes to those things and I think a friend of mine almost described it as having an out-of-body experience or just like like you've been possessed by someone who does want to say yes to those things try you know that I mean all within reason but Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. to kind of Yeah, be open to all of the learning experiences. And like while it is a really great opportunity and you can get a great reference and stuff, I feel like it's almost like you have less fear of mess, not messing things up. Like you don't want to burn down the lab, but you know what I mean? Like it's not (laughs) like, like if you get a bad grade on your transcript, you're all, you know what I mean? Like you could just not ask that person for a letter recommendation or, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to saying they're not quite what I mean there, but do you know what I mean? Like it's a... You're saying don't worry about showing that you don't know how to use the AFM. Totally. Because there aren't really actually that many consequences or something like that. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And I think I've told you about this mythical trip that I went on. I say mythical because in my head it's built up into this like transformative uh-huh. experience, but it was only a couple of days. But I did go and I was the person who asked a bunch of questions. Mm-hmm. And when they were like, hey, do you want to see this? I'm like, absolutely. Like, I'd love to see that. And I could not believe how warmly people responded to that like I thought Mm. being question person would be irritating Mm -hmm. but people were like oh she's really interested in this and you know so yeah trying to kind of 
Sure. Do that. And it can, in some ways, it can be easier to do that in a situation where you don't already have a track record or you don't know the people. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And also, you're specifically there to learn things. You exactly. Know? Like, you're only there for this internship. The point is to to learn some things. So, um, I mean, nobody expects that you already know how to use all do these you, things because the point is that you're there to learn them. I didn't write this down, but that's such a good point because I think – that's something I don't think students understand. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's like they're being paid to come in and they're supposed to have this expertise. And it's like, no, no, this is all an exchange. Like you're going to mm-hmm. do this work and then they're going to teach you a thing. It's not right. like you're going to go and like stuff these envelopes and you have to get X amount done. Like, it's, uh-huh. you know what I mean? So, yeah. 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 Okay. That's a really good point. I really like how you were saying how to get into this mindset of saying yes to all these things. Um and it reminded me of the technique that I used early on in my teaching where if a student would ask a question and I wouldn't know, like, you know, a question about how the class worked and I hadn't decided how that part of the class worked, the, the, I would be like, well, what would a professor who knows what she's doing say? And then I would say that. So, like, in this case, it could be just like you're saying, well, let me just be, what would a person who is really enthusiastic and says yes to all these things say right now? I'll do that. And um, I I remember you saying that and I love it so much. And like every time you say it, I'm like, I'm going to do that. And then it sort of fades. So I'm glad. It's it's always good to have a little reminder. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if somebody does say, hey, do you want to go see the AFM? Like, surely they want you to say yes. You know, why would they be offering? Won't they be disappointed if you say no? You know, so if you think about it that way, it's like. They just want to show you the AFM. They think it might be helpful for you or they're excited about it or, or whatever. And so um, it'd be nice for everybody to say yes. Right. And I think in my head, I was like, uh, like, they're going to expect me to drive the AFM. And that's not the <laughs> terminology, but do you know what I mean? And yeah, I think. Sure. And I think being really honest about things, too, and being mm-hmm. like, I don't know how to do this. Can you tell me mm-hmm. how to do this? And yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell me, what about you? What do you find works? Well, I have very similar thing, but kind of a different angle on it. Um, so the, the overall umbrella is working hard to understand and learn everything you can yes. while there. And the specific tip I have about that is asking questions. And I feel oh, like... so much, yeah. Yeah. And when I did my internships, I was definitely scared to ask questions because I didn't want to show that I didn't know the thing that I was asking a question about. But I think I really could have gotten a lot more out of things if I was more comfortable just asking the questions. Um, So I guess I'm thinking about, you know, questions about the background information. Why are we doing whatever it is we're doing? And then also questions about how it works and what what it is that we're doing and just just asking questions about all that. And I I think it should be balanced with trying to understand things and really paying attention and thinking about it and putting all the pieces together in your mind as well. But I think I maybe went a little bit too hard on the side of I'm going to figure it all out myself. I know. And um, forgot that it, it was it's perfectly fine to ask questions. And, yeah, I, I it was definitely the same, like the same reason you were saying no to seeing the AFM. I would not ask the question because I was afraid of showing that I didn't know. But, um, and but it's so funny that question. we thought that anyone in their right mind would be like, oh, I'm sure these 19-year-olds – totally know the answer to it. Like, of course they knew that we didn't right. know. Exactly. You know what I mean? And exactly. like, I don't know why I would think that. Yeah, but, you know. And yeah. like we were, you know, as an intern, you are joining some place, some research group, some company, whatever it is, for a little while. So, of course, you don't know the inner workings of that research group oh, yeah. or that company or whatever like that is understood by everybody except for potentially the intern. Oh, so, yeah. um, little... Shout out to the interns that it's okay. Everybody understands you are not familiar with this this new thing that you've just joined in. So, yeah. So I think if we can tell the the interns that we know who are going off to become interns or the interns who maybe we interact with if they're around for the summer or something, uh, I don't know exactly how we'd say it, but just something like something about, you know, don't worry, you're here to learn. That's what you're that's what you're here for. Totally. I'm like I'm trying right now to think of it and I can't think of a job where you could just rock up on the first day and be able to just slot right in. Like everybody sure. needs the, you know, the tour yeah. and all of the stuff. So, yeah, exactly. Like even if you are really well versed in like, say you're an expert in some field and then you're joining this company as the expert in the field, you still need to learn 
how the company works and like how this photocopier works and yeah, like totally all that stuff, totally. you know? <laughs> totally. So anyway, what are you working on? So I have a, two things, main things. So I've had students who've gone to situations that were not ideal. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And so I wonder what to tell them about kind of how long to let things settle before you start maybe trying to get switched to something else or do you know what I mean? Interesting. Like okay. the line between yes, no research is actually kind of a bit boring and the line, you know what I mean? And okay, but this isn't actually because it's really rare, but I've definitely had two cases where I don't know what was going on with the person they were working with, but they clearly did not have the time or energy Mm-hmm. You know, one person, I think their PhD student had just left and they did not have anyone to work with the undergrad. Okay. And then someone else, I think, <laughs> this is weird, they thought the person was a different gender and were not happy to work with that gender. Huh. So that seems like a clear situation that she should not have had to, you know, tolerate. But she mm-hmm. kind of just put up with it you know so mm-hmm. kind of I don't want to put it in their head that like if you're not 100% satisfied you should be like leaving sure, a bad Yelp review course. for this professor or whatever. <laughs> but like is there how to sort of talk about mm. you know this is a good experience for you and so like the other person was in a situation where there was like 10 it was a really well organized REU so there was like like all of the students were brought together all the time and it was easy to slot into another group. Do you know what I mean? So that okay. was a perfect... So that person just went to a different lab group, but was still in the same cohort totally. of RU students. Mm-hmm. And then got eight weeks of great experience, and that was fine. So it's just kind of knowing when to tell someone... Like, I remember any time I've done anything, the first few weeks are kind of awful, because you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Sure. And, you know, so I don't know. And I guess maybe the thing is there isn't anything you can tell them, and just... If they reach out to you, you can kind of get a feel for the specific situation. But definitely yeah. not to like endure 10 weeks of misery or, mm-hmm. you know, so, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing. Yeah, I, I agree that this doesn't seem like the kind of thing to like advertise that maybe mm-hmm. you'll be in a bad situation because, as you say, it's so rare. And also, as you say, the first couple of weeks are always going to be a transition totally. time. So, yeah, I do feel like it'd be more like feeling it out if they are talking to you. I was going to say something else, but I forgot what it was. Did you have any experiences? Like, has this happened with you where people have Well, I'm thinking of a student. This was a grad school experience where he went off to work with somebody and then something happened and he couldn't work with that person and he switched over and worked to somebody else for grad school. And so he was emailing me about that and how he'd finally gotten settled after all that turmoil. And I was saying... I'm, you know, is, are you sure that you are in a group that, like, it sounds like it's a good match in terms of the, the workload and them helping you, uh, get, learn all these new things and helping you expand as a researcher and all that. But are you sure this is the topic you want to become the world expert on? Yeah. Because, um, it's not the one that you aimed for. And in the end he said, no, he was, he was, he was feeling good about it. And so it was fine. So that's a slightly different scenario because, you know, they're committed, you know, once you get your PhD in this field, you've gotten your PhD in that field. And in the summer internship's a little bit different where it's just one part of um, a whole bunch of experiences you're having. Yeah, dude, like, this is awful, but I've had conversations with students where they're agonizing about which project and I'm like, it doesn't really matter. But like, you know what I mean? So it's like, sure, because you're, which... you're just learning what mm-hmm. projects you like. That's kind totally. of what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, I feel like um, if there is an actual problem, it makes sense to switch. But most of the time, there's not an actual problem, and it's just learning whether or not you like this field and this this type of research or this this type of company or whatever it might be. Right, and and learning that you don't like it is a piece of information. Definitely, you know, very for sure. very helpful, very helpful. Okay, I have another thing yeah. I'm working on, oh, yeah, which is that? a complete 180 of what I said for what's working. <laughs> so, like, is there a point where enthusiasm can be annoying? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, if someone is like, hey, I want to talk to the PI every day and chat, and, like, they're just like, no, please talk to the PI. Like, how to kind of... Do you know what I mean? Okay. Well, my thought there is that's not enthusiasm, that's being annoying. It's pushing the boundaries of what's 
Okay, yeah. The norm in the group, you know? So, like, I mean, so so maybe there's two separate questions. As far as I think it makes perfect sense... I mean, I, I think it's it's wonderful if the if whoever's running the internship is able to be very clear about expectations. Like we're going to meet once a week, you and I, but the, you're going to meet every day with the grad student or whatever. And I think whatever the expectations are, the intern should say, "Okay, I'm totally on board with those expectations," um, and enthusiastic about them. But then, yeah. So so um, as far as the actual enthusiasm being annoying, I don't think just pure enthusiasm is annoying so long as you're also thinking about yeah being professional and doing whatever it is that you're asked to do and stuff like that I mean what do you think think? well I think I think you're totally right and I think like hopefully there's good like you said like it'll be clear what the paths of communication are it's Mm -hmm. not so much I'm just worried that my whole say yes to everything Mm -hmm. could actually be bad advice if someone is too (laughs) like me 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 I want to join in and you're like okay settle down so but I think I think yeah I mean that's saying yes is somebody has to invite you right or ask a question for you to say yes you know it's I don't think I would advise somebody to wriggle their way into every single thing that they can but if if somebody says hey do you want to come or something that's different or would you like to learn this instrument I think yeah the answer is always yes would you like to learn this instrument would you like to meet so and so or I don't know yeah I th- yeah I think. okay that's a fair point but that is an interesting balance well it's just I certainly oh, man I don't even know how to say this because I like to think I don't I'm not like committed to hierarchy but also mm-hmm. I've definitely encountered students when I was a grad student and you're like, oh, okay, they're like, you settle down. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Where they're just like, oh, I'm going to talk to the big boss about this great project idea. You're like, oh, okay. You know, and yeah, just kind of under, but I think people understand. Sure. And I think, you know, to some extent, it's the big boss's job to, it, like part of the big boss's job is to manage these people. So totally. if you have somebody who is over enthusiastic about presenting their ideas to the big boss every single day or whatever, the big boss should say, hey, thank you for all these ideas. This is what I want you to, you know, redirect the enthusiasm towards the way it should go. Um, So not that we want, we definitely don't, we won't want to equip our students to not be annoying, but I don't think... I don't think we have to worry about them being too yeah. enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah, I feel like now that I've said it out loud, I'm like, okay, that's... Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, what are you working on? Well, I'm working on... I mean, we've thought about all these cool things about what would be the most effective way for students to get the most out of their internships and what did we wish we do differently and all those things. And I don't really tell students this. So what's the best way to communicate this advice to students? You know, there's the odd student who will ask me for advice. I'm not even sure if that's ever happened about going off to a summer internship. Yeah. So how, like, I could imagine if we happen to be having a conversation about internships, I could sneak in some advice there. Is sneaking it into the chat the best way to do it? Or should I, would it, would it be helpful to, like, have some before everyone goes off to summer internships, uh, yeah, that's why I, don't you get together and we can chat about how to make the most out? That could be cool. Totally. And like when I'm saying this now, like that conversation I had with the other student is the first time it's really come up in that way. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I was thinking possibly when they ask for a letter of recommendation, could it be like, oh, let me, let me know what you get and then maybe we can have a chat about it. But I like your idea of having some kind of like... You're all going off to summer camp, so let's have a meeting about it kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and just kind of chat about... And I mean, I think that'd be a great moment to discuss enthusiasm versus um, messing up the hierarchy or yeah. following the guidelines um, and saying yes. You know, and all these things would come up and we would kind of get the nuances, I think, out of, you know, somebody would be like, oh, but I'm afraid that if I... Um, and uh, I'm too enthusiastic, I'll be annoying. And then we can say, well, what would be annoying? You know, I think, oh, I think everybody I love, will yes. understand all this if we have a little discussion about it. And that kind of feeds into, cool. like, I feel like it's a common thing to want to kind of showcase some stuff about people who went on an REU to Ooh. the people who are coming up the next year. So it'd be kind of cool to have a pre and post, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe at the post, other students who are coming up in the 
the next year could come to that and hear about it. You know what I mean? And We could even do, like, if we did it every year, this is now becoming a whole thing, but if we yeah. did it every year in, like, May, before mm-hmm. people go off to their summer internships, we could have a couple people who did it last May, or, like, you <gasps> yeah. know, and talk about things. Um, and I could be, you know, I think it should be a discussion with everybody there rather than those people being the experts, but they have a little bit more experience that they can totally. add to the discussion. And then all the people who are going off... That could be cool. That would be very cool. And it I wouldn't be that. that hard in terms of faculty workload because it would you'd come with a bunch of topics you want to hit, like the ones we talked about, and have a discussion, facilitate the discussion. And cool. even, like, numbers-wise, like, I don't know how many there normally is in chemistry, but I feel like that could be a chemistry and physics thing. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like That's it's a, a pretty, idea. you know, I think the things would be true for both. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. we're not talking about particulars of science we're yeah. talking about how to get the most out of an internship in general so that that's a cool idea of a I way of disseminating it, yeah. these ideas yeah that's very cool 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 and Thanks if anyone so has any tips oh yes please about what worked for you or what you're working on for this we would love to hear them oh yeah and then you know providing that opportunity would kind of let students connect with each other so perhaps they could give each other tips and tricks for like the applications oh, that's a great and idea. Yeah, that's it. And then if they're like in their internships and they're having one of these problems, they could talk to somebody who was also in the workshop and say, oh, my goodness, I ran into this problem. Oh, yeah. And that'd then they cool. wouldn't email us. So that would be even better. No, I'm kidding. That's <laughs> no, they should email us. <laughs> You're more generous. Of course, I'm all I'm like, ooh, Clara, this could go in your next, not tenure file, but promotion Post-tenure file. Post-tenure review mm-hmm. file, yeah. Totally, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Always mercenary, Ruth. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us on the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.